What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Steven Ostentoski here of MGO Fish, bringing you another episode of Recruit Review for the class of 2019. Today, we're covering Giles Jackson for episode four. If you missed episode three, I'll link that right up here. Wrong side again. And quick shout out to Nick Dobbin, who recommended I look at Giles Jackson for this episode. Again, always comment on the video for who you want to see next. I'll take it into consideration. And for Nick, here you go, Giles Jackson. So Giles is out of California. He went to Oakley's Freedom High School in Oakland, California. I'll put his stats up here as well as some of his testing numbers over here. You'll notice that his sophomore and senior year, he was mainly a wide receiver, where junior year he has mainly rushing stats. He was used as an offensive weapon, primarily the running back. So that's why you don't see as much receiving stats his junior year compared to his sophomore and senior year. Stats are pretty good. He posts 1,400 receiving yards as a senior and close to 1,600 rushing yards as a junior with plenty of touchdowns both those seasons. So obviously, lot of production there. His testing numbers got him the top spark score at the Nike opening the summer before his senior year. His 4-4-3-40 is among the fastest at the position. His 3.85 shuttle is out of this world fast, his agility off the charts, and his 38.5 vertical is also excellent. Comparing these numbers against the 2019 NFL draft entries, his 40 time would rank second amongst the running backs and 12th amongst the wide receivers at the draft. His 3.85 shuttle would be first among both the running backs and the wide receivers at the draft. In fact, no one would come within 0.18 seconds of that time considering how fast that is no one even touched below 4.0 then finally that 38 and a half vertical would get him third amongst the running backs and seventh amongst the wide receivers up next his recruitment so he hadn't picked up any power five offers until he was the MVP of, of that Nike opening event I mentioned with his testing numbers the summer before his senior year. Oregon offered mid-June, and then the world kind of followed. He got a lot of good Power 5 offers. He had a final list of Oregon, Oregon State, USC, and Michigan. He had other offers from Florida, Cal, and Colorado, but those teams didn't make his final list. He committed September 10th in 2018. He had an unofficial visit, I believe, earlier in the summer, and then an official visit that fall before he committed. Okay, let's take a look at his ratings. Rivals, ESPN, 247 I'll give him four stars rivals and 247 have him between the 30 to 40 range for wide receivers ESPN has him listed as an athlete at 26 I don't know why his composite is 41 for wide receiver it seems a bit off usually if you see a group between 30 and 35 or so his composite be closer to the 30 range but it might be a little bit off as far as his state ranking they all agree kind of in the 30 to 40 range as well with Again, strange reason his composite seems a bit off. Nationally, his composite is around 300, but I, I think his national ranking is closer to around the 250 range, with 247 having him as the 233rd in the 2019 class. Uh, 247 has him at 5'8", while Rivals and ESPN have him at 5'9". They all have him in the 170 to 185 range, so he's probably closer to the ceiling of that at this point, given that he had the summer to bulk up a bit. Okay, moving on to scouting. He is a super slot bug. Obviously, with those testing numbers, 40, and his vertical jump, his agility is off the charts. He's definitely a guy who hit the scene for 7-on-7 seven seven very heavily, performed really well. You can imagine he'd be a matchup nightmare for linebacker. He's been talked about as having really high end speed, both agility, acceleration, and his top end speed. Can return kicks and punts really well. He's really a guy you want to get in space. Hashtag speed in space, Gattis. If you're looking for a good and bad list, good is his unprecedented agility, elite top end speed, some solid juke moves, uh, effortless athleticism with all the skills to really, really hack it at that position. And then the bad, you know, his size isn't great at 5'8", 5 5'9", 5 175 or so. He's not going to be bowling through anybody. And then he doesn't really have an extensive route tree. Junior year, he was running back. Senior year, he was more kind of utilizing the screen game. Probably not the most polished wide receiver at this point. Okay, let's move on to his film. These first few plays are for him his junior year. His first one, one cut, boom, he's through the hole and shows off that kind of burst to get into the end zone. Play number two here, he shows excellent burst. Runs straight through the secondary after getting through the hole. Nice little crafty stiff arm right there to create some separation at the end of the run. And then play number three out of the backfield. Gets the handoff. Pulls a Houdini act here on the sideline. Showing really nice balance to get into the end zone. Play number four here out of the backfield again. Breaks a dude's poor ankles. Actually, he's on a screen. Breaks that dude's ankles right there. Beats the dude to the sideline. Shows some speed. Sidestep the last defender. And then just kind of... 
waltzes into the end zone. Another screen here. Beats a guy to the sideline really easy. Pulls off a nasty spin move right there. Again, just nobody there to get into the end zone. And then final screen here. Pure speed shown on this one. One move there, kind of stiff arms off, and then just blows by guys. He has stop end speed, but getting there just really fast. Watch the routes on these next couple plays. This fake inside right there, and then he's on a streak. That first move got him a lot of separation for that touchdown. Then this one, really nice break out of that flag route. Easy catch, separation again. And then a couple catches here. I really like how he dips on this catch and then just kind of gets this sideline, shows off that speed again. And then a couple plays here shows off that he, he does have the ability to make a really nice catch. This one's out of the backfield. Really nice one-handed snag right there. Here's a play action in double coverage. You'll see here uh, he's going on a streak again. Again, nothing special on his routes. He wasn't asked to do a whole lot, but, man, he wrestles that ball away from the defender right on the sideline. And here's a crossing route again. He, he flashes his ability, throws one hand up there, gets the one-handed snag. This is a nice, easy out route here that he makes a diving catch on. So, while, you know, I don't think his routes are the best, he clearly shows the ability with decent hands here. And this is probably my, my favorite. He catches the ball. It's high over his head. Catches it, immediately goes into a spin move to avoid the contact and get blown up. Really, really excellent. And here's a couple of catches from uh, the camp scene at the Nike opening where... Again, you'll see a constant theme of him having separation, showing off that speed, some moves here, getting past defenders. He's just kind of a guy who can pull away from guys just with that elite agility and speed. So overall, from watching that film, I really like his his burst. I think, you know, his speed is really good, 4-4-3-40 time, but his burst to get there is probably his most impressive skill set. You know, I don't see any issues with his vision. I don't know if it's necessarily a strong suit, but he's a guy... But you give him some space, he's going to find a lane. He's got a, a couple crafty moves. There are some stiff arms that I really liked from him. He had a really solid and effortless spin move. So he's a guy, again, get him in space with a defender or two to make miss, and he can be dangerous. Only downside is I didn't see a whole lot of routes. He shows the ability to do that, especially with that agility. It won't be a problem, but there might be some time for him to ramp up in that regard. And then, as always with these recruits, it's hard to judge from highlights exactly how good his hands are. So that's always something that you have to watch moving forward. No one has mentioned it as a red flag from anywhere I read, so probably not an issue, but just something I need to see more of. Real quick before we get to projection, guys, appreciate all the support thus far. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. It helps grow the channel. Like if you do enjoy the, this series, I plan on getting a lot more out as we ramp up here towards the season. And then follow my Twitter. I'm actually going to be posting a poll to see who I should cover next. So I'll take into any of the comments here into account as well as that poll to help determine who I'll cover for my next episode. Okay, projection. So he's not an early enrollee. He's just showing up now uh, in the start of this summer. Comes down to how big of a role the slot or offensive athlete H back kind of role is needed for this offense. Again, Gaddis, he's the kind of guy who will use a lot of these sort of athletes. I covered Mike St. Ristol in episode two, same kind of skill set as Giles Jackson here. Neither really have routes developed. Jackson likely has a higher athleticism ceiling overall, but St. Ristol does have the advantage of being a bit bigger. Early in role so he could learn the offense a bit more. I would expect these two to be competitors throughout the years. I think in 2019, you'll see St. Ristol get a lot of the earlier action. Later in the year, I could see Giles Jackson getting some of those snaps as he gets more acclimated with the program. I still think they're both going to compete. One will get scattered snaps maybe a bit more now with Oliver Martin transferring and the other will still redshirt. And then in the future, you could see Giles Jackson be a punt or kick returner. Obviously, DPJ will have that role for 2019, but 2020 onward, it's something Jackson has experience with. You could see him there. Okay, guys, as always, thanks for watching the video. Like, comment, subscribe. Appreciate the support thus far. Links will be in the description for other videos and my Twitter if you want to check that out. Otherwise, I'll see you in episode five. Take it easy. As always, go blue.